Welcome back everyone. I had a question in the comments and I'm going to go over how you can add um, an image to uh, both sides of an, an item, so in this case a coin. Uh, so I've already showed you how to add text on one side and of course an image on the other side. I won't go over how to uh, make an SVG that's in the other videos, but I'll show you an alternate, alternative way where you can create um, as essentially a coin images on both sides. So we'll start with the primitive, so we'll just right click uh, we'll go to a cylinder. I'm actually going to start large uh, and then we're going to work our way down. So um, in this case we're going to go to scale so you can hit the S key or click up here. And I'm going to turn off uniform scale for a moment and we'll keep this large. So we'll do 150 by 150 and we'll make the Z height 10. Alright, good. Now next what we're going to do um, we're actually going to right click on this cylinder and we will go to add part. So under the add part, we'll then go to load. And I actually have uh, this logo here. Now the difference between dragging in or just opening up um, a model or an S, in this case an SVG file uh, they're separate when you add it to a model they're actually both together we're going to switch to objects process and I'll show you what I mean um, so if I click out of this meaning I'm not clicked on anything uh, they both move together but we actually need to shrink this so over on the left you can click on the model you've added and you can move this independent of everything else so what we're going to do here Let's effectively shrink this down. So we'll go to scale. We'll make this smaller. Make this smaller. And usually what I like to do is I like to keep the base color of the model the same as the color of the item that you're adding to it. Uh, so we're actually going to make this a... Eh, we'll make it white for right now. And we can change this later if we need to. Uh, so I just clicked over on the cylinder. I right clicked here, change filament, so we'll make this white, and everything underneath becomes white. Uh, now I need to move this, so we'll click over this, and there's, a f there's an easy way to actually shrink this as well. Uh, you can grab the corner and we can center this by right clicking and centering. And we can do the same thing for the cylinder, where we can right click and center. And again we're going to go back to here. So if you ever click out of it, just make sure that you click the item that you want to control. So we're going to shrink this down. Now at the moment, we can't see it. And if you if you saw, it actually snapped back over to both of them so they move together. So what I like to do, I'm going to center this again, is click on the item you want to control and you can use the move um, tools or hit M. And if you hit blue, you can bring this up. Now this gets a little tricky initially, so I'll actually go slow. So right now we're actually hovering above the model. If you bring this down until it barely touches, so in this case it'll disappear, go up slightly. We've just basically, um, it's not quite flush, but we made it visible. But from here we can paint. So we will then click on uh, our the entire model. So again, make sure everything's selected. We'll go to the paint tool. Now with the um, this logo, it's red, white, and blue. So uh, click on your color. We'll do the paint fill. Uh, so red. It's already white, blue. And we'll make the letters black. All right. And quick test, we're going to go slice, and just to make sure everything is f close to flush, um, we can actually drag over here. So top layer has the color, next layer underneath is white, and of course the rest is white. I think we can actually bring this down a little bit, so let's go back to prepare. So we'll click on the item, go back to the move tool, and we're going to move it down a little bit more. Now let's slice again. All right, so we just lost red, so we actually have to go a little higher, which isn't a big deal. So go back to prepare. 
and the move, and we'll bring it up a little bit more. Slice again. All right, so we have everything there. We're gonna flip this. So I'll go back to prepare, click out, click in, and we will go on to the lay on face, which is the F key, and flip. Now we actually are on the blank side, so we're actually gonna add another image onto this side. So we will then right click, add part, load, and I should have the second one here. And we'll open this. I'm going to zoom out a bit. So we're over here. I'm going to bring this closer. Actually, I'll just right click and center it. And we just need to shrink this down. Now, since this is actually a cylinder and I made everything um, 150 by 150, I can actually just change it from here. So I'll just select this and 150 by 150. I'm not going to make this 10. I'm just going to make it 1 for the Z height. And an easy way to get these to center. I just want to raise this a little bit so you can see it. So I'm above. So we'll click on cylinder, center it, click on the second one, center it. All right, so we should be center. So actually, I can just drag this down. But before we do that, if you look closely, you'll see that this is backward. So what we'll do here, I'm actually just going to rotate this. We'll go to rotate, and we're actually just going to flip the x-axis. So we'll make that 180 degrees for a flip. And we should be uh, correctly, uh, have the correct orientation. All right, now we're going to bring this down. until it barely touches. And go down a little more. And if it's hard to see this, what I can do is actually I'll, I'll paint this. So I'm gonna click out, click in. Uh, we'll go to our paint tool, do the same thing with the red, white, and blue. So red, this part's white, this part is blue. We'll paint the letters. All right, and we'll do a quick slice. All right, we, whoops, we're actually looking good here. Let's check the layers. So it looks like we have two layers that have color. I just want one layer, so I'm gonna to try to bring it down a little bit more. So we'll select this, go to move, bring this down a little more. So it disappeared, go up a little, slice again. All right, so we actually have to go up a little more. There's actually another option, um, but I'll show you this way first, and we're gonna shrink this, or I'll show you the second option in a moment. So go back to move, we're gonna bring it up one more notch. All right, good, good. All right, so we're going to shrink this down. So from here, let's do a, so I clicked out, I clicked in. Uh, we'll make this 35 by 35. So we'll go to scale, 35, 35, and we'll make the Z heights, let's say five. That's how three looks. Okay. Now, if I go to slice this, we're probably going to lose colors, and I'll show you why in a moment. So if you notice, we just lost a color. So a quick way to fix that is to actually make whichever one lost colors. Actually, we'll do both sides. If, uh, but we'll check the first one. Uh, so this one here is uh, Pepsi 2. We will go into scale. Um, and if you look at this, we actually have um, two, well, three 
uh, and four. There's still four col colors. You have the white, you have the black, you have your um, red and blue. Um, now, certain colors actually stayed, certain colors disappeared. Um, at the moment, we are actually in a 0.2 layer height. So every layer becomes, um, basically adds a color. Some colors get kind of weird. So you notice the black stayed, the blue stayed, but the red disappeared. Um, and this is actually one layer. When I slice this and I go down a layer, so this is layer 15, this is layer 14, you'll notice that the, the top layer just disappeared. But if we go back to prepare, I don't know if this makes sense, but if we go back to prepare, uh, we're, we're at a 0.29 layer height. So technically that top layer, it's only showing one layer, but we need two layers for that red to show up. So if I make this a 0.4 for this entire SVG file, actually, let's go back. And then I go to slice it. Actually, probably didn't do that right. Let's go back. <laughs> Keep forgetting I was in global. So we go back to here. Uh, let's go to scale, 0.4. Let's do three layers, so do a 0.6. May have to play with it. All right, let's go slice. So red just showed up. So try two layers, didn't work. Three layers definitely worked. All right, and if you notice from here, go from layer 16 to layer 15, it disappears. So we just needed uh, more layers for, for these colors to come through. It usually is a little easier if you have two colors, but when you have three or four um, uh, colors, you may have to play with this. And we, if we go on the other side, since we're still in slice mode, we again, lost some, some layers. So if I go back to prepare, switch here, and I'll try the two layer first. So this is a 0.15, so let's do a 0.4 slice. All right, so this one was fine with a, um, two layers. This one needed three layers for that red to show up. All right, so uh, what do we have here? Something is floating. And let's see. Um, I'm going to flip this and we'll check the other side. So it's a little more work than the ones I was showing you before. So I typically consider this like the intermediate level. So we will click out, click in. We will hit the F button or click lay on face. We'll flip this. And apparently this was a little high. And that's the reason. Um, actually, let's slice. So basically, this whole section seems like it was floating. So even though we see the letters here, the rest of it, where the white's at, was um, this was floating too much. So it thought that it was printing uh, in midair. I'm actually going to leave it like this. Because I can try to lower it, and you can play with it as well. Let's center everything again, or at least move this up. So we'll go to that one. Move it up a little bit. All right, go back and see if I can move it down. If this doesn't work, we'll just do three layers for it. Go down a little. We'll slice as a test. All right, that that works. All right, so I will slice this and I'll see you on the other side. So that actually turned out all right. Uh, there's one other thing that you can do, especially since this um, may not be easy if you're just working on one model. Um, what I like to do, especially if I'm um, sort of playing to see which one would look the best for playing around, I'm gonna open up another plate. I'm actually going to copy this over. So we'll just clone it and we'll make three copies. So one thing that you can do, especially uh, since you saw I was uh, just playing around with settings to see which one uh, works best, you can actually just make changes on each one. So um, so with this, let's say I scale this down even further. So let's say 25 by 25 and make this by three. 
And let's move this out for a moment. And if I were to slice this, you can see things like, um, I guess the, the text isn't showing up properly. Um, if you make an item too small, uh, things like this will happen. So all these little dots are actually um, uh, your seam. So it's where your, your nozzle essentially will leave a small blob and then move on to the next section. You can go to global, switch from your wall generator to classic, well, from classic to arachne. And it usually handles uh, thin lines a little easier or a little better. Uh, not perfect, but if you'd notice now that we can actually see this. So if you run into an instance where um, your text or your, your details aren't coming out as well, you can try to go to the Arachne wall generator. It's not perfect, um, but it beats having to swap out a nozzle to something smaller. One other thing that you can do as well, you can turn on ironing. So it actually um, well, what it says, it'll pretty much try to um, iron out any uh, imperfections, and usually it's pretty decent. You'll have to play around. Some filaments actually work better than others. Now, the reason why I opened up this other one is you can start to make changes. Move this down. And so let's say if I flip this. And I sliced. All right, so right now this is floating in midair. And the reason why it's saying that, that text adds just enough clearance between this logo and here to where it creates a problem. So flipping it is fine, but also what you can do, let's flip this around. And you may have to have a steady hand for this. Let's go to lay on face. Go back to objects. One plate two. This one is the one. You can try to lower this a little bit more. Until it is close to flush as possible without losing any colors. All right, so that might be as close as it can get. The way we can test that, let's flip it. Flip, slice, and we shouldn't have a floating error. Okay, so if that floating error from before just disappeared. So uh, you could definitely play around with this and you can play around by having multiple of these on your plate and you can see which works best for you. So obviously each model is gonna be different. You can try to uh, lower the Z height, but you may have to increase the um, layer height for each of these and just select um, the logo or the text and just play around with it. And obviously these aren't hard or fast rules. So whatever uh, makes sense to you. If you have any questions of course uh, reach me in the comments and I will try to create other things so sort of like beginner level intermediate level uh, we're gonna stay away from the advanced levels because even this I struggle with only because there's a lot of little details and every model is gonna be a little different uh, so again leave comments down below and I will see you next time thank you